The views expressed in this video are that of a hobbyist, not of a business owner or a commercial operation. Clear as mud? Greetings, it's me again. I'm back after a bit of a delay because, well, frankly, our weather sucks out here. And that kind of changed my plans a bit. So as you can see, what I'm doing here, I'm just going to document the build of one of these and, well, primarily to answer questions that I keep getting asked by email and private comments or even public comments. And, well, I'm just going to do it this way instead. But as you can see, I have changed gears just a little bit. Instead of using the river rock in the bottom of these, and, you know, primarily the reason I decided to go a different route is because there is just no way to say six tons of two-inch river rock and make it sound like anything enjoyable. So what I'm doing here is using perforated drain line and using that to create a void in the bottom of each wicking bed. Now, after this is done, I'm going to come back in another... Uh, video segment right after this showing what's next but the plan here is to put the perforated pipe in the bottom to create a four inch reservoir and then cover this up with landscape fabric so things can't get in the ends of the tubes and then after that uh, you pour lava rock in there just enough to hold the landscape fabric down and prevent crap from getting in the ends of the pipes and then you fill it up with potting mix and I will show you how I do that with my cement mixer and uh, the raw materials to make your own instead of going and paying through the nose like 20 bucks 20 bucks for a bag of a well a two cubic foot bag of like miracle Grow potting soil whatever uh, you don't need to buy that stuff. It's overpriced and it's a whole lot cheaper to make. So that's it for this. Oh, as you can see, my overflow one over there, that cap on that one is permanent. This one over here for my fill line, uh, that cap comes off. I just have it on there right now for example purposes. But that's it for this segment. I will come back in just a few seconds with the next step okay I'm back again excuse that background noise apparently the geese think that it's time to fly back north again not really sure why winter's far from over but here's the second step this is the landscape fabric installed any kind of landscape fabric is going to work uh, this is the more felt type stuff but that's not absolutely necessary uh, it was just cheap um, the roll that I got is four feet by a hundred feet long and all I did here is cut a section off that's about six feet put it in there and tuck it down around the edges so things can't get in the ends of the tubes and then next I'm going to put the lava rock in on top of it and the reason for the lava rock is because it's a porous rock and will also act like a a wick in a sense so rather than just using solid river rocks this will help get water up to the potting mix on top and I forgot to mention in the previous segment I'm sure people are going to ask how much of that perforated drain line there is in the bottom and it comes out to be about 25 feet. There's seven pieces that are three feet long and one that's 27 inches long, another one that's 20 inches long. So roughly that's 25 feet. So that 100 foot roll that I have down there should be about enough to do four of them. And that was only $40, not bad. Um, I guess I may have to buy Two more of them to finish all 12 of my beds out here but that's it for this segment i'm going to go get the lava rock and start putting that in 
Okay, as you can see, the lava rock is in there and it's only around the edges. And that's just to lock the landscape fabric down in place. It's, that's about the only purpose that it serves. As you can see, the water does make it up through the landscape fabric. So that is what the soil is going to be in contact with. As for the amount of lava rock in there, it's just a single one cubic foot bag. Um, there's really no need to put any more than that in there. I have like three more, but it, that's cheap. It's like, uh, I don't know, I think $5 for the bag. So I'm still doing pretty good on expenses to finish this. Um, the next thing is going to be to mix up the potting soil. And I'll get everything else out here and cement mixer is going to be how I do it. Makes it a whole lot easier than trying to mix it in a five gallon bucket with a shovel. Might as well just uh, mix up three and a half cubic feet at a time and get it over with. But that's it for the lava rock. We'll come back with a, another segment after this. All right, here we are again. And this is the point where we start adding the potting mix to the wicking beds. Now what you can see that I've done here, I learned this from, I cannot remember the guy's name, but he has just a whole bunch of videos on YouTube about this stuff, but he refers to them as sub-irrigated planters, which is what they are, rather than wicking beds. Um, but in his examples, he always puts down one just plain layer of uh, sphagnum peat moss in the bottom or on top of the landscape fabric to work as the initial wick so that's what I've done here um, it's dry right now but it will start saturating with water and it'll darken up and the water will just keep migrating upwards and then I'm sure a lot of people are going to come up with questions about, I guess you would call it the recipe for the uh, potting mix. Now everybody's mileage varies. Uh, I use what I use because it works, but I'm sure other people are going to say, oh no, there's a better way to do it. And in which case I'm going to say, good, do it. Uh, whatever works for you, works for you. But my little recipe is... For every one bale, which is 2.2 cubic feet of sphagnum peat moss, I use one of these bags of perlite. And you can see that coffee can that I have down there. What is that? I don't even know what the volume is on that. Okay, one pound. Um, I use that coffee can there, and for every bale of the sphagnum peat and the bag of perlite, I use two of those coffee cans full of vermiculite and vermiculite is nothing more than mica insulation. Um, I'm sure there are going to be people going, yeah, but that's not horticultural vermiculite and BFD. I don't care. It's still vermiculite. It's still mica insulation. So I use two of those of mica insulation or vermiculite. The other bag we can't see over here, barely, uh, it's just composted turkey poop manure. Um, I use two of those as well. And you can pretty much use anything you want there. Uh, if you have chickens, I say go clean out your, your chicken coop. Uh, use the wood shavings and the chicken droppings in there. Um, let them compost for a while. But if you buy it by the bag already composted, goes a lot faster and then the last one over here is one coffee can of well horticultural lime uh, some people call it dolomite or dolomitic lime whatever you want to call it it's horticultural lime um, 
got to have that in there or your leafy greens oh there goes an angry beagle uh are not gonna grow well because they like they like lime but that's what i do i put all of that in a cement mixer and that 3.5 cubic foot tub is just enough to hold it oops it's kind of dry right now i have i have a watering can as you can see i add water to it as needed but you just let it sit here and mix for a while i would have this running well i can turn it on right now and you'll see why i don't let it run while i'm trying to video because it's a noisy bastard but that sure makes it a whole lot easier than putting things in five gallon buckets and trying to stir it up with a shovel it's a that's a pain in the ass so after that's all mixed up and I'm going to add more water to it to get it to stick together a little more. Um, then I'll tip the tub on the cement mixer backwards and dump it into the wicking bed. According to my calculations, I should only need three bags, which is what I have per wicking bed. So if you do the math on everything, to put the drain line in the bottom of the wicking bed the landscape fabric the lava rock and then all of the potting soil it's way less than fifty dollars per wicking bed for materials so it's you know it's a bargain in my opinion and no this is not for aquaponics um, aquaponics yeah it's great for a lot of things but growing root crops and large plants no 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 towers and such yeah they're great for leafy greens herbs and stuff like that but if you want to grow something big you need a bigger planting area so that's what the wicking beds are going to be for and there's going to be 12 of them so i should be able to grow quite a bit on the south side of the greenhouse the 64 towers are going to go on the north side once i clean up my mess <laughs> And my little hydroponic system down there I'm gonna connect that into the fish tank here real soon but that's about it for this um, I think I've pretty much covered everything that a person needs to know otherwise if not Google's your friend so oh boy there goes the beagle again I'm gonna cut this off and finish up my work take it easy talk to you next time bye